But when you go out there looking for him and looking for photoshops, I don't know whether it is not uh, it's not very useful. Mimi nataka kumalizia. Because I wanted to say this. One of the other reasons that uh, somebody is saying to meenda is because when we were at Stone Earthy, Your Excellency, and you are leading the resolutions of the Stone Earthy on who is going to be a leader where, one of them is saying, where is G, how could you represent? And I've been telling the person, when the, our leader is speaking, kama sasa atakuja onge hapa, na wewe usumame pale, you ans, unaanza kumujibu, Iyo siyo kuogea. That is echoing. It is echoing. And it is a lack of decorum. You engage leadership in a structured and well-behaved manner. The issues he was echoing about, we had already talked about them in the leadership and agreed on how we were going to help going forward. But even when you echo, you make things worse. So there will be very many excuses that will be thrown around. None of them would hold on the wall. We have the two ladies, wonderful ladies here. I mean, this, this, uh, Mweshimua, she has come to her Maraki Akwanza. Now, I keep what is this? You know, if you have been in Punga once, twice, three times, now who is it? Kuona, Akwamba, is a valley, Kunawatu and Akudaganya, where we Kunashida. Na ile safari tunaenda ni mzito kuliko hii ya kuagili kukubaliana hapa ati namna gani. So we actually want de de dedicated people. We are not um, out to kick people out. But if you choose to go to another party, do it decently. Resign, go, let us have a direction. Those who want you, let us have them uh, learning uh, you on their ticket. Ukishida ni sasawa, Kenya vado itaendelea. Lakini sio hii maneno ya kurukaruka unaenda mguu uko nusu umeachiwashia mguu mwingine baada hii ama ile watu wanasema eh, pole we are together we may not be together physically but we are in together in spirit atutaki hiyo roho ya kuachiwa hapana hata hiyo spirit beba kwa sababu kituagia hiyo spirit inakuja kusumbua sisi and it keeps us not uh, going on so i want to confirm here that um, I, we are here because we are here and it's because we are part of this and the journey that is ahead of us, we will move with it. We have, uh, I know there will be other debates that we are going to have. I want to tell you the movement that we have of resisting a steal of our votes that was occasioned within Jubilee zones more than any other requires people, men and women of character, to keep going. This is another battle just like the one that has been fought many times. Those, those days when, he was fight, when Baba was fighting, alikuwa na watu alikuwa na ito akinamuite. Imanyara, Robia, eh, nani mgini? Koigi, Matiba, Hawako Sasa. Ladies and gentlemen, Tuko, we will fill that gap. And we do not need many. We do not mean, we need the wajiko. Na wajiko wako kule chini, anapiga sufuria. Ako na jaa. Kama wewe umeenda state house umechiba, wachana na, na wale ambao wako na jaa. We have not kicked anybody, we are still open. Lakini kama kuna magini atuwezi wacha, lakini tunaenderea. Asante sana and God bless you. Let me take this opportunity. To welcome the, our His Excellency. Karonzo Musioka, the party leader, the party that has remained very steady, Haija Yuba Yuba, they have resisted all the temptations. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, so much, Ndugu Jeremiah, Ndugu Raila Molo Dinga, former prime minister and the coalition leader, um, majority leaders who have been made to look like minority, Mishmo Andai, Mishmo Bui, and the teams in Parliament, um, minority, majority, minority in the Senate, Senator Stuart Mazayo, and Senator Ambua, and all the elected members of Parliament. I just want to take this opportunity to thank our presenter 
Adam Zolo. I think he deserves a clap, a very big clap. Because he spoke to us at a time when um, the world is in a spin and uh, where the weather, the, the, the wind bloweth, sometimes you are reminded of um, some uh, works of art and those of you who are students of Shakespeare will perhaps, if you have read the book that I once did in Form 5 and I think in Form 6, Hamlet, by Shakespeare, where the chief character uh, was contemplating all manner of things. And one of it was a soliloquy. He wanted to commit suicide. And he went something like this, to be or not to be. That is the question. Whether, ladies and gentlemen, it is nobler in the heart to suffer the slings of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing, end them. That was Hamlet. And another one said, it was him actually went on to say, <laughs> time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite that I was born to set it right. Time is out of joint. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable members, as we speak here at Manzoni, over 16,000 people have perished in a deadly earthquake. I think we should just stand. I feel in my heart we should just stand for a minute and, and remember the people of Syria and the people of Turkey. Since unlike many other countries which are sending, we, we do a, a, a remember, of course, acknowledge uh, our brother is um, suffering that disability. I'm sure he's with us. Um, I remember when I say time is out of joint, remember seeing those children being pulled out of the rubble in Syria. And now the weather is not like in, in our case here. It's cold, biting cold, minus. And apart from those who are perished, others are going to perish because of lack of um, the wherewithal. Let's remember them. Thank you so much. Ah. <sighs> And as if that is not enough, <laughs> here at home, we are suffering reversals of our democratic gains. And, and whoever thought of calling for this retreat, I want to thank the leadership of our coalition and parliament because they thought right. Uh, straight from your two weeks in Mombasa, was it? And I must congratulate uh, Engineer Zambia Honorable Kimilu, I just got information today that uh, WIPA members from Makweni were actually received invitation to go to State House. <laughs> I don't know why they're so selective. <laughs> yeah, just add that. Uh, and they declined. Uh, politely, politely. Because you can send very powerful messages very politely. Because if we are going to make sense of, of our democratic gains, you do not go, as uh, Adam Zolo has put it, cannibalizing political organizations and, and inviting members without reference to their leadership. It is unthinkable. Therefore, uh, I saw others saying that WIPA is going to State House after after our colleagues. <laughs> uh, I haven't heard anybody saying they're going there. I must thank the member for Mwingi Central, Gideon Mulyungi. I'll give him, I'm choosing just an example. He was with us in Kamukunji, in Kibra. And actually, he <laughs> went a step further, declared himself a general from his side of the world. 
but he was invited by Moses Kuria to State House in Mombasa when uh, the president was uh, doing, and, and I use the word president advisedly, was opening some factory. And so, because there's coal in Mwingi Central, a lot of coal deposits, um, it was someone to go and explain why him and I don't know why they left Irene Kasalu, <laughs> the account women rep for, for Kitwe, because I know she has been uh, in the forefront in opposing coal mining in that area because of the current uh, uh, climate change arrangements all over. But Gideon went there, but he did the decent thing. He said, I've been summoned to State House. He called his party leader. He called his party leader. And I think that's the way to do it because of the urgency of the matter and the, 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 his committee was in Parliament. He just had the decency to call me and I straight away said, please go. Because as Jeremiah said, if there are issues to do with your own constituency, you, you should feel free to do something. But then, then uh, take that against uh, the negative, the opposite situation of a conspiracy to defraud democracy. A conspiracy to defraud democracy. Last night I was watching CNN and a gentleman who is German has written a book, Ndugu, which I think we should look for and read. And Adams, please, I want to challenge you to look at that book and make a critique of it. Uh, the title of the book is uh, Democratic Capitalism by one wolf. And this morning, listening to BBC and the Director General of the World Health Organization, she was a Nigerian lady, very capable, and been asked, uh, what do you say to the fact that uh, globalization has died? <laughs> and she said, uh, allow me to differ with you. It hasn't. Of course, you are seeing, it, like in the case of Europe, nationalism, European nationalism, and in the case of Donald Trump's America that time, America first, and uh, but NAFTA arrangements, which is Mexico, America, and I think Brazil, or is it Brazil, the NAFTA arrangements out there, Mexico, Mexico, America, Canada, thank you, is still in place. And we have in our region, of course, uh, the building blocks towards African unity, the Abuja Declaration, if you remember, if some of you have looked at that. And therefore, the fact that we are strengthening regional integration as within East African community, that's why we're seeing the East African National uh, uh, Anthem, I don't think we are cannibalizing our, our approach to regional unity. But Brexit, perhaps, was to blame for that kind of uh, impression. And somebody last night was saying, Europeans, and actually quick to say, when uh, Zelensky, President Zelensky, makes a surprise visit to, to visit Prince Charles and, and the House of Commons and addresses them and asking. In fact, you are reminded of what Churchill once said during the World War, Second World War, when he went to the U.S. and said, give us the tools and we'll finish the job. I'm saying this as a background to what I'm just about to say. That as a nation, uh, welcome Sanda Ndugu Eugene Wamalo. Tumpigie makofu. And, and Dap, Dap and I think Kanu are uh, really represented. When I, when I heard them saying Kanu is going to state us, I started laughing. Uh, so, fellow Kenyans, because you are leaders, if you are not careful, you are going to follow you're going to find your own constitu constituents ahead of you. And that's where they are. We saw that in Jakaranda. I saw that in Kibra. You're most likely going to see that in Mavoko tomorrow. And therefore, as a leader, you need to ask your question. Do you want to lead or you want to be led <laughs> by your own people? Something is grossly wrong with our country. 
But I draw a lot of satisfaction out of the fact that Constitution 2010 is in place. And so, if it was not that for Constitution, some of us would be in detention for sure. Therefore, Adams, those of our fellow countrymen who struggled for democracy in this country remain our heroes today. Because of them, we have now established a tradition where even if you are president, Dugu Raila, if you are the president today, you will require <laughs> William Ruto as leader of your position. I saw last night during the address of the State of the Nation by President Joe Biden, perhaps the biggest democracy in our Constitution 2010 is fashioned in a very straight way, very strong way along the American Constitution. He had to go there and plead with Speaker, the Speaker who is Republican, after Nancy Pelosi left. You now the Republicans have gotten the leadership of, of the Congress. Now, William Ruto and his people did not have to, to cannibalize our majority. He could still have come and say, let's have a, a bipartisan approach. Joe Biden was there. This is a country we are in now. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot cannibalize democracy in this country. It will not happen. Not under Constitution 2010. Therefore, I just want to encourage us to be very strong and very focused. Very strong and very focused. Uh, I had uh, one day say that even if you are left 50 of you or two or one, I think as Jeanette who said, even if it's one, you are still the majority. This is a mi the minority. But this is a team. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage all of us tomorrow to talk in Amnahi, <laughs> to end the Mavoko, this will be a rally enough. Because as I told you, if you don't do that, if you don't decide in your own mind and your own spirit that you want to be part of the action, please do not blame your constituents when after four years or thereabouts, they throw you out. Do you think these people who went to State House today, uh, the ones who went the other day, if there's an election to be called, would they really? Poor Jalango. In fact, I was looking for him. I'm still going to look for Jalango. Because I was here. We must also exercise tolerance. <laughs> when somebody wants to say sorry, don't throw them out. Ah, I see that is a, a point of departure. I will not withdraw my remarks. <laughs> I will not withdraw my remarks. But imagine the state of mind poor Jalango is in. Because Kibra now is his hostile ground. You know, you are supposed to enjoy, you are supposed to enjoy your tour of duty as a, an MP for your constituency. Let me tell you, I must congratulate our brother Tim Wanyonyi. And I'll tell you why. His brother is Speaker of the National Assembly. But he is elected on an ODM ticket in Nairobi. And he's here. And he's not afraid. If anybody was to go to State House, surely Tim Wanyonyi should have been leading them. Because the Speaker is there. <laughs> my brother, my brother who forgot his uh, struggling brother when we were eating tear gas with him and Tinga. My friends, time is extremely of the essence. What you decide to do out of Manzoni today and tomorrow may shape your future positive progression in elective politics. And don't say you are nominated because even then you may want to run at some stage. So I want to thank all of you for standing firm. This is a time to stand very firm. And stand up and be counted. An opportunity like this is very rare. Where leadership is expected of you. Please do not allow your, so that it will be said that the 13th parliament was the parliament that brought down the democratic gains that this country had made. So, maybe start Kongia Sana because I just wanted to share those thoughts. 
Um, and before I invite uh, my brother Eugene to come and greet you, um, and and so you know this was your retreat actually, so I thank you for inviting me. I thank you so much. You know you didn't have to invite me because it's your retreat. Eh? Nani anaomba kura? Kwa nini kura ni aliyo? I'm here to accompany Baba. Watch here, man, bringing. Sindeo. Before we do that, we have some work to do, and that is to salvage our democracy. You're going to look at those figures. By the way, with all the noise that KK are capable of doing, do you remember I said they are Kenya Kwisha? Hey, with all the noise they're capable of making, none of them has contravened. The, the findings of the whistleblower because they're absolutely truthful. Ah, I, I like it, Adams. I uh, like your sense of opt optimism when you think even, when you said even the compromised judiciary <laughs> will take judicial notice of the development, the political developments in this country. So, be there. Be a champion. Uh, be a champion. Let us really make sure this country is safe for the present generation and the generations to come. If we falter and go and eat to Gali or whatever it is, uh, we will be counted on the wrong side of history. Some of us have decided to stand for what is in the best national interest of our country. And this time, we are called upon to stand firm and be a true buffalo soldier. Because if you are not, the alternative, the alternative is you go home. Yeah. If you want to go home, Apema, start now. But I'm quite sure you now know. Even in your heart, in your, in your, in your own mind and heart, I'm sure you, remember, you can feel that all is not well with our country. And the people themselves are crying out. The confusion in the education sector, <laughs> real confusion. Uh, people think high cost of living is global. No. But we had an opportunity when former President Uhuru had to negotiate tough with the IMF executive director, whatever the title is, to say, please allow, my people are going to perish. We want these subsidies in fuel, yeah, so that we at least can manage to get around. But uh, for anybody to jump up and say, oh, it is a world problem. No, no, no. Therefore, stand and dig in for sovereignty of this nation. Because it's a very important nation in the world. Even if you are to look at the biblical teachings and see what happened when and wherever, uh, and then the spiritual dimensions of where we are. Even the remnant of the church is beginning to stand up. What was the remnant of the church? Because the church stood compromised, are beginning to say, wait a minute. All seems to have gone wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Dugu Eugene Wamalo. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Stephen Kalonzo Msioka, the Honorable Raila Odinga, my brother Kioni, Honorable members of our National Assembly and the Senate, good afternoon. The danger of coming late is that uh, you might either be irrelevant or you might be repeating what has already been said. So I don't want to say much and just to uh, give my apologies for arriving late. Uh, we had a, <coughs> a very tragic accident just a few hours ago in the last 24 hours. And our executive director of the Democratic Action Party of Kenya, one Colonel Benjamin Mwema, uh, passed away. And we had just been with him. Uh, he was with us in the Azimio rallies. And uh, he was driving home. And on Thicker Road, there was an accident. So they were just doing the post-mortem, the burial is tomorrow. That is why I was late. I should have been here uh, much earlier. 
Actually, the gentleman comes from uh, Machakos County. Many of you know him. So that is why we were delayed. And uh, I just wanted to say one or two things. Uh, as you resume, because we know that after this retreat uh, you'll be going to Parliament, uh, there are a few things that are coming before you. For me, there is one that is a matter of great concern, and I really wanted you to uh, look at it. Uh, it concerns devolution. It concerns our counties. And I think there will be a petition uh, for additional counties. That petition is targeting certain counties, and I believe the Honorable uh, uh, William Ruto uh, is fully behind that petition. It's targeting to divide the county of Transoya, the county of Bungoma, to create Mount Elgon County. It's also targeting Busia County to create Teso County. It's also targeting Migori County to create a new Kuria County. They are all within their rights to bring these uh, uh, petitions. But the real issue that is on the ground now coming from uh, uh, this part of Kenya, where the three counties are likely to be created, you can feel already this driving a wedge between communities. And those who were in support of this constitution, the 2010, I can tell you for sure that those in State House were not part of that progressive movement that fought for devolution, that brought about this constitution and devolution. There are those who oppose that are there, and they do not have the interest of devolution at heart. They do not, or they are not doing this to advance the objects of devolution under Article 174. They are doing it for political expediency. When you look at the 47 counties and the results, our candidate, Raila Odinga, won the majority counties, over 24 counties, went blue. William Ruto won, I think, uh, were they 21 or so? But he's trying to see how to create additional counties for 2027 purposes. And the three, I'm sure he is, of course, persuading the minority communities that he will protect them. And if we make that mistake, we would have opened the Pandora's box when we create ethnic-based counties. Where will you stop? Because beyond those communities, there will be now a demand by clans. There will be a demand by many of the marginalized. It cannot be good for our national cohesion. Please apply your minds to that. And if he's saying already they are unable to actually uh, pay the 47 counties that are here, they, they have been unable from... October, counties have not received their money. Gashago is saying they have no money to give the 47 counties. Yes, so, <laughs> oh, I, 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 I'm told there's a likely impeachment. Sasa, we, I just wanted to leave that with you so that you see how to uh, drive that agenda to uh, defend uh, 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 devolution, so that if there's anything, it should be, we should be looking at additional resources going to those counties, so that we, we, we build democracy from the grassroots, and we turn our counties into engines of socioeconomic transformation of our country. If we are talking, if they really believe in bottom-up, devolution is the real bottom-up, and that is where the focus should be. Stuck in the same mingi kuliko hapo, I just want to wish you well, but to also tell you that what is happening now reminds us of the dark Kano days. We went to uh, a function in Kibra. By the time we were leaving that rally, because some of us have been seen uh, very committed on this side, we have been targeted. You've heard about what happened to my brother uh, Matiangi uh, last night, and Baba, we must really thank you for being there for him.
In fact, I want, after we finish, I want you to know my house in case it happens to me also. Please. <laughs> because I'm told there's a list. Those of us who are ministers in Uhuru's government who are close to Uhuru, they are not just targeting Uhuru, they are targeting us as well. Maybe you might not know this, Baba, but uh, having been a defense minister, I had uh, about four uh, security officers. Three were with the drone. But the day I was seen in Kibra, the next day, the only remaining police officer assigned to me was also with the drone. As we speak, there is the uh, attempt to intimidate. You are the voices of the people. If you don't speak out, the dark days are upon us. In fact, what we are seeing is like those of you who are students of European history are like the days of the reign of terror by the Jacobins. So what we have in Kenya today, if you don't come out to fight this legitimate regime, the reign of terror by the Kenya Kwanzaa Jacobins is upon us. Please, fight for the people. Asanteni na mungu wa May I now uh, have the pleasure of uh, inviting the people's president, Jacomo Mwenyewe Aonge Nasisi. Karibu, Karibu, Your Excellency. Thank you. You may be seated. The reason uh, I'm asking you to sit down is because I want to ask you to stand up for one minute to observe a silence in honor of uh, the late Minister for Education, Mr. Uh, Professor Magoha. Thank you. Thank you. Wajumbe wa azimio hamjambo. Hamjambo tena. Azimio. 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 Asanteni sana. I am very delighted to have opportunity to talk to our members of parliament at this moment in time. Now, I have uh, some notes which I put together that I want to refer to first, and then after that I'm going to talk to you from my heart. But I was saying here that we meet at a strange time in, in the country. It's also a, a trying time. At the start of this regime, we did not only warn about its illegitimacy, we also warned that there's real risk of the country going back to the old order. The old against we have made over the years completely rolled back. It has come too soon. Kenya is clearly on the path to the past. So when people talk of crisis, the crisis is not in Azimio or in this meeting. The crisis is out there with the legitimate Kenya Kwanzaa regime and the heavy yoke the regime is putting on the people of Kenya. We are therefore to consolidate our resolve to fight for the people of Kenya. We have a choice that we have to make going into the coming weeks and months. On this one, on the one hand, we are told elections are over and we should accept the outcome and move on. On the other hand, some of us believe the elections may be over, but there remain serious wrongs to be made right if future elections 
have to have any, meaning, uh, any meaning and purpose. You choose to fight, and I want to believe that in you here, I see warriors ready for the battle ahead. There are many freedoms we have to fight for on behalf of Kenyans. Today, I want to interest you in just two. One is the, the two freedoms we have to prioritize. Uh, um, these the two are the ones which you want to prioritize in this period. First, there is social and economic freedom of the people of Kenya. Kenyans are hurting. They demand and deserve economic justice. Secondly, electoral freedom. The electoral justice that will ensure the votes the people of Kenya cast during elections are counted and are respected. We believe that social and economic justice goes hand in hand with the struggle for electoral justice. They care about statistics. How much money has been collected in taxes? How much loan the people have taken? The percentage at which the economy is growing? The legitimate regimes don't realize but behind those statistics, there are real human beings bearing a yoke they do not deserve and cannot survive. That is where we are today with Kenya Kwanzaa. It is about statistics, not the people. Kenyans deserve a government that understands that the people are hungry and angry, that people need jobs that people need wage increases to be able to live with dignity, that people need better prospects for the future. Kenyans want and deserve to live well and eat well. They want good and well-paying jobs, and they want their salaries to be constantly adjusted above the inflation. I know no, no nation in the history that has ever put up with such a huge tax burden as Kenyans are bearing today and survived. Kenyans now work for taxes. Tax now comprises close to half of the prices of goods our people buy. And I give an example. Today, if you pay 100 shillings for water, 70 shillings of that money is tax. Kenyans need justice on taxation front and we're the only people to take up this battle. We must force and end an end to taxation policies that place heavier tax burden on the middle class and the extreme poor, while those to the administration easily avoid taxes and are reimbursed their Proceeds through proceeds of crime. We must lead Kenyans to demand social and economic justice predicated on access to jobs, a fair minimum wage, a free education for all our children, in addition to abolition of punitive taxes. The country is crying for social programs that can lift the people from poverty. We cannot accept as normal that millions of our people have nothing to eat and that their poverty is being weaponized and politicized to give legitimacy to a rudderless and illegitimate regime. The time has come for the time has come for the full implementation of social and economic aspect of the Bill of Rights of our, in our Constitution, and we must lead that push. Kenyans deserve some guaranteed minimum income during these tough times. The social protection programs, which guarantee a basic monthly income, must be reinstated and expanded. In our push for social and economic justice, 
for the people of Kenya, we must also strongly oppose plans to sell off state-run parastatals and ensure these entities serve the public good rather than the lining the pockets of individuals in government. With regard to electoral justice, we must return this country to the ideal that the government is beholden to the people, that it has no other source of power except the people. The people express their preferences through the ballot, and that the preferences made at the ballot must be respected. As I have said before, Kenya has become a laboratory for bad election practices that others borrow around the continent. An organized elite keen to protect narrow selfish interests has forged strategic alliances and captured strategic systems and institutions the sole purpose of subverting the substance of elections. As a result, the majority is at the mercy of the minority with regard to free, fair, transparent, and credible elections. People wake up at dawn, stand in long queues to cast their ballot, but they end up with the results that indicate their votes were not counted and did not count. Economic and electoral justice must be seen to be intertwined. We must pursue them with the resolve, the courage, the sense of urgency, and the faith that they deserve, and we must do it now. Soon it will be too late. I'll finish those notes. Then now, I just want to now add a few points. First of all, what Professor Adam Solo mentioned to you people, and uh, also what my other three brothers here have, have talked about. One, I want to begin to tell you here that nobody has asked for, and there will be no handshake. They've kept on talking wherever they go. Oh, these people are doing this because they want to be called for handshake and so on. You have not asked anybody for handshake, and we don't want any handshake. What we are talking about is we're doing this in the interest of this country. In the last elections, we negotiated with Honorable Uru Kenyatta, and what we agreed on was put in a memorandum of understanding which we made public on the day of the handshake. And that is what informed the decision to set up a task force which came up with the BBI. That was the basis of the handshake. We then, as the opposition, never had any position in government. We did not even appoint a CS, not even a minister. So there's been a propaganda which has been spread by this team of Kenya Kwisha, that we were responsible for the problems within Jubilee government. We never had a say in the Jubilee government. We never had anybody appointed even as a head of parastatal in the Jubilee government, not even a permanent secretary in the Jubilee government. We have never had, they are the ones who are in government, the ones who are living there earning a salary, having protection of security and so on, and yet they come out to the government and say that the government had failed. If it failed, they were part and parcel of that failure, not us. Now, those who have spoken before have given you historical background to political development in our country from independence to where we are. We had a multi-party system at independence. We had Kanu and Kadu and APP. Eventually, Kadu and APP dissolved and joined Kanu. They all joined Kanu without having to go for any by-elections. Just walked across the aisle 
from one side to the other side. But later on, when there was now internal contradictions within Kanu, then they came up with a constitution amendment that required that if you left the party that sponsored you into uh, parliament uh, and you, you resign from that party, then you have to go back for a uh, by election, a re election, to seek the mandate. That existed at the period when they had the KPU. Then, after KPU was banned, we had now a de facto one party state. Uh, de facto. From 1969 to 1982, when they came up with another amendment. That made the country now a de jure single party. Now you either are a member of just Kanu, that is the only when you can be elected. And if you were uh, suspended or expelled from the party, you automatically lost your parliamentary seat. And by election was, was held in your constituency. That went on until we put pressure for repeal of Section 2A and allowing for formation of other political parties, which we achieved in 1991. After that, we had the first multi-party elections in 1992. And then we went into parliament. We had Kanu, Ford Kenya, Ford Asili, and the DP. Uh, we had also uh, Kenya Social Congress of the late George Anyona. After the swearing in, or, uh, not just the, the swearing in and the election of the speaker, before parliament was officially inaugurated by the president, some members defected. One from Port Kenya, one from the DP. And this now occasioned a by election. They were defecting to the ruling party, to Kanu. But the requirement is that if you defect from the party that sponsored you in the parliament, you have to go for a by-election. And we have by-elections in Migori and in uh, Bonchari. Later on, we have by-elections in uh, Lugari, when Pili Wawiri, the MP, then defected. There was also a by-election in uh, um, uh, Hamisi when the member of parliament, the late Mr. Haniri, defected. Later on, we had by-elections in uh, Ikolomani, in Lurambi, in uh, um, Shinyalu, when members there defected. We had also by-elections in Diwa and Nyatiki constituency. Each time a member of parliament left the party that sponsored them to parliament, they had to resign and go and seek fresh mandate. That was the rule. I myself resigned from the party that had sponsored me into elections for Kenya. When we disagreed, irreparably with the leadership, I resigned and went and sought a fresh mandate from the people of Langat. And I was re-elected. This was the, the situation during all that period of time until now we came to 2010 constitution. The 2010 constitution now created a presidential system of government. But all the same, it still, it says clearly that Kenya is a multi-party democracy. Kenya is a multi-party democracy. A multi-party democracy, mature multi-party democracies, there's nothing like defection. U.S. you see a situation like the last time, there's only one member different between the Republicans and the Democrats. But the, the situation where at a member of a, a Democrat would, re, would, would defect to go and join Republicans is unthinkable. There are very few cases in history. It will not work. In the UK, it's unthinkable that a member of the Labour Party will defect and join the Tories. 
It does not happen. It does not happen. You are elected on this party mandate and you remain the member of that party unless you are expelled from the party. You remain a member of the party. In the German parliament, the same. You are a Christian Democrat, a Christian Socialist, you are a, a Social Democrat, and so on and so forth. This is the direction we must go in this country. We have had collisions, a pre-election collision because of the presidential nature of our system here. But you are elected as a member of a party which is a member of a coalition. And a member of a party which is a member of the coalition, the party should not actually resign, it should not leave the coalition. That because as you're going to the people, you are going with a mandate, you are going with the manifesto of the coalition, and you are being elected on the basis of the manifesto of that party. This is very, very cheap, very cheap and principled for a political party to say, after the elections, you are now resigning and now going to join another uh, coalition, the one you actually you ran against. That is political prostitution. No, 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 no basis at all. On what basis did UDM resign from Azimio to go the other side, even before the speaker had been elected, even before members had been sworn in? What was it that was now more attractive in Kenya Kwanza than in, uh, in, in Azimio? Merely because of political expediency. Political prostitution is something that must stand condemned by all civilized Kenyans. Uh, then now, now the so-called Kenya Kwanza is being proud that they are majority. It's an artificial majority because the people they have here have not gone to ask the people who elected them whether they want to go to Kenya Kwanza. They are going there. They are going and voting with the people against whom their own elected voted. They were elected against those people. So now Mr. Ruto is enjoying an artificial majority which does not deserve. And therefore we do not respect any laws that are passed by that artificial majority. Now you come to voting in, in Parliament. You see what Kenya Kwanza is trying to do is to you abuse the so-called artificial majority to change the laws of the country, very fundamental laws. You have a situation where you find that the, the I don't want to call him president, the head of the executive, is uh, writing to the speaker for the speaker to initiate a legislation that will end up with uh, creating a position of a leader of official, uh, official opposition. Now, ordinarily, first, the president cannot initiate a constitutional amendment. That was even the ruling of the Supreme Court. Secondly, the speaker does not originate legislation. The speaker sits there and waits for, 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 for for, for, for laws to be brought, the, the bills to be brought to him. Usually, if the government wants any uh, legislation, first it must be a cabinet memorandum. That matter is discussed in the cabinet. The cabinet then approves it. It goes to the Attorney General, who then now uh, completes the bill, the, 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 the draft bill which has passed by the cabinet, is then given to the leader majority who now comes and tables it before the House. That is how the uh, civil parliament work. So this law, which is supposed to be initiated by the president through the speaker, is null of an issue. Null and, and void, and should not be accepted by parliament. And our advice is that our members of parliament should not accept to de deliberate those, the, the, the legislation. The other one is saying that these members who have 
defected from Azimio coalition need to resign their positions and go. Then secondly, you see a new dangerous phenomenon developing that members of parliament are approaching the executive supposedly for development in their constituencies. Under our current constitutional dispensation, the resources are being actually uh, uh, allocated by parliament. Parliament is the one that the, the, the executive comes with a budget proposal to parliament. Parliament looks at that, those budget proposals and then agrees on how to allocate resources. So the days when members of parliament used to go and see Mutukupu Rais Nyayo at whom only to idea CC, to let them Radio Maji Hapa, to Jenga Locals Housing Zia Hapa, Barabara Hii, to Tanganezwa, when I pick a Magoti Chini Koraisa, let them in the Leo, Imikwisha. That era is gone. You don't need. If you want to go and see Mr. President as a person of friend in state house, go. But if you want to go and talk about issues that affect the party, then you must be given permission by the party before you go to see the president. What you see, these people must be seen for what they are, traitors yes. in the course of a revolution. We are in the course of a very serious issue. What we have through here is uh, the course to bring the people of Kenya at the center of development of our country and also to get electoral justice. They have said these people are not fair losers. But I want to tell you, and they're saying, oh, Baba had allowed people to go and meet with the president here and there. Now he's saying he does not recognize the government. No, what I've said, I never said that I was recognizing the government even at that time. But that was a time also before the whistleblower came out with a glaring evidence, which we also had ourselves. That evidence was available to us. But the whistleblower came out as an insider and came out with a repeatable evidence of the rigging of the elections. That information which is there, I want to invite you to know, is information that is verifiable. We had ourselves also hired an expert from outside the country. You will remember we were in the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court our lawyers demanded that we be allowed access to the server so that we can be able to get authentic information. The Supreme Court said they agreed, but in the collusion of one of the judges who was in charge of the ICT, the registrar did not allow our people access to the server. Our experts were there. A letter came from the company that was offering the, the providing the services, Smartmatics, saying that they cannot allow access to the server because that will infringe on their proprietary rights. Here is a company hired by the government paid to provide the technical services for the, the, the country. And there is a dispute over the results. And one of the parties of the dispute is, is, is asking to be allowed access to the server, so because that is where the information went. And the company is refusing to allow us access to the server. And then this around the same, same film court comes out and saying we do not have a case. Now I think it is important for me to point out to the members here the structure that was in place on the 9th of August, when people went to vote. That structure, is, is you had what you call the Kim's, Kim's, Kim's system. The voters were being identified biometrically. And after they've been identified, they're being given ballot papers to go and cast. At the end of the day, these ballot papers were being counted. 
and after they've been counted, then the presiding officer at the polling station would enter them in a form that they call for 34A. That 34A will be completed. Then the presiding officer would sign, and then the, the agent would countersign. Then the presiding officer would announce the results publicly, and then he would scan those results and press a button to transmit to the server. Then he would paste a copy of the results in a wall somewhere. Then he would go with that from 34A to the telling center, constituency telling center, where there's a returning officer. The presiding officer will come with from 34A. There, the presiding, returning officer will receive 34As. And then it would be added, this is now on form 34B. They will be added, and after they will be added, he will sign with his ID number, telephone number, then the, the agent of the parties will countersign. Then he will stamp the IB stamp. Then he will announce the results. And then he would again scan and transmit. Those are the results which are authentic. Now, the information available in the whistleblower's report there has authentic original results from 245 constituencies. Original. With the IABC stamp, with the signature of the returning officers, Countersigned by party agents with their ID numbers and their telephone numbers. And there is a barcode also there. The barcode, if you scan, tells you the location, the date, the time when the transmission was done. It cannot be uh, uh, copied. It's authentic. So I want you to know that the report in the, I, uh, in the IBC whistleblower is authentic report, authentic information. It shows that at 245 constituencies, Mr. William Ruto got 4.6 million votes, and we got 7.1 million votes. If you had there 45 which were not transmitted uh, electronically, but the returning officers came with the physical forms to IBC Center at Bomas. If you take this, those results and now add up 245 plus 45, that's 290 constituencies, plus the diaspora, then Mr. William Ruto gets 5.9 million votes, and we get 8.1 million votes, a difference of 2.2 million votes. That is authentic. Cannot be denied, cannot be contradicted. The IBC cannot contradict it. They're just now saying somebody must have probably uh, get, get crashed in there and got information. That's the investigation they, they, they're doing. But they will not come out and say this is not authentic information. And that's why they're saying if you're denying, let us have an independent or institution like the Commonwealth or the AU to come and access the server and audit it. What is for the server? In the, the, but on the basis of that information, we might be saying, it's not that we are lamenting. If this matter is not rectified, what would be the reason for Kenya to wake up again in 2027? to go to an election, if at the end of it, one madman called Wafula Chebukati, or who has been paid, comes out and says, I'm the returning officer, I'm the one who has been gazetted, I'm therefore the one with the results. Because what happened on that day? Wafula Chebukati left Bombers of Kenya at 5 a.m or claiming that he was tired, he was going to rest. By that time, there were still 29 constituencies left which had not been tallied. 
He did not come back. By the time he came back at 2 o'clock, he called these commissioners and says that he has got the final results. They ask him, where did you get the results? We have been waiting for you here. Oh, my staff have already tabulated. They say, but how can we? We cannot be part of it because we are still waiting to tally the other constituencies. He says, no, I'm the returning officer. Now the returning officer is uh, go going with the two other commissioners to make an announcement. Now you have a commission of seven members. Those co that commission cannot be, it could not be six members. It cannot be two members. It cannot be four. It cannot be eight. It cannot be ten. That's, it has been an, an odd number. That's why there were seven. There could be nine. Now, four out of seven majority say no. Three say yes. And this is upheld by the Supreme Court. Something must be seriously wrong with our nation here today. Because you, you need to go with the majority opinion. There was a dispute over the results which were announced by Mr. Fula Shebukati. So we are saying that these matters must be corrected. These matters must be corrected uh, um, before we Kenyans can even think of going for an election. And we are saying that this regime is an illegitimate regime. And that's why I've said this is the time for politics. You will be told the time for politics is over. Now it's time for development. I believe I'm addressing a team of politicians. If there's a time for politics is over, there's no job for members of parliament. Because that, that is what you're doing, that's what you're paid for. You're politicians. That's why you're in, in, in parliament. And politics and development are intertwined. Politics and development are intertwined like two mating dogs. So much you So much you can. This is what you're paid for. You're paid to politics. You're paid to politics. You cannot, you, if, if the same for politics is over, then the, close parliament and let the bureaucrats continue doing the development. The work of politicians is to politic. And politics is development. And that's why there's no need for politicians to go and beg the executive for development. That is the right of the people of Kenya. People of Kenya pay taxes. They pay taxes and that's why it should not be like as if it is a generosity of, of the president that you're going to get roads. That's because of the president is considered you're going to get water. You're going to get uh, uh, health centers. You're going to get affordable housing scheme. That is why you go to national government with a clear mandate, and you also have county government with a clear mandate. And our party, our movement, must be seen to be defending devolution. Devolution is an outcome of a very lengthy process, and there are very many people who opposed devolution. They didn't want it. So we must insist. These people have said that they are going to go to 35%. Now they're not even able to give 15%. So Parliament, both Senate and the National Assembly, must stand up and defend the county government. They say they're wanting 480 billion. That is what, the minimum 425 billion. That must be given because that is what has also been approved by the 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 the, 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 the commission. So I therefore want to finish by saying we are having barazas with the people. Consultative barazas, people's barazas, which will help us to actually articulate the views of the people. We must have this, we must continue to have these barazas. These barazas will help us to sensitize our people.
of their democratic right, which has been stolen. These people know that they stole elections. And they want to rule you as if they won elections. And they want to turn this country into a single party dictatorship. So the parties will have no voice in parliament. And they are trying to use money and so on to move our people into their side. So let's go to the people. The power to the people. So we are going to have consult these consultative meetings. And they are not going to last very long. But we must have them. Tomorrow we are going to be in Maboko. Maboko Declaration. On Sunday we are going to be in Bosia. On Monday, we will be in Kisi. Then, on Friday or Saturday, we are going to be in Narok. That we have already agreed with on Olekina there. So these are Azimio Barazas, consultative with consultation with the people of Kenya. And I invite all our members who are available to come there and show the face of Azimio. Azimio must bring the change that this country uh, uh, very badly requires. This is, the res this is the mission. This is the responsibility of our people. And this is what I am actually delivering back to you people. I'm throwing a challenge, stand up and be counted on the right side of history in our country. Thank you. Azimio. Azimio. Azimio! Azimio! Uh, can we uh, give Baba a, a, a round of applause <coughs> that he surely deserves? Let's just be seated for a few minutes. Just one minute. Just one second. Uh, some housekeeping issues. We are doing well so far, and as you know, we are here until tomorrow, okay? But we don't intend to have this program running into the night. We shall finish it before the uh, nightfall, definitely. Then we proceed for a cocktail, cocktail dinner. Now, uh, let me introduce uh, our next presenters who will be coming in after lunch, because we are breaking for lunch shortly. Uh, that is, uh, but of course, they'll produce more, more, more in more detail by the session chairs. Professor Gitile Naituli of Multimedia University, he has just arrived. Of course, we had Dr. Haman Manyora in the house. I haven't seen him here. Okay. He'll also be coming in after lunch. So I'll be suggesting, therefore, that the Q&A sessions for the three, uh, thematic areas be consolidated okay after the two remaining presentations and then we well, then we merge it with the plenary session a, a short plenary session before we wrap up but we'll be given enough time to air your views we want this to be as interactive as possible that when we leave here tomorrow having come up with our the solutions we can only have them implemented without any, any, any obstacle. Uh, so with, without further ado, therefore, if you may allow me, would I be in order if I suggest that we proceed for lunch? We, but we shall pray first for the lunch. But before we pray for lunch, let, could we hear what is burning from Honorable Wanjala? What is it? Yes, proceed, Honorable Angela. Well, thank you, Mashimiwa. Your Excellency, the former Prime Minister, uh, you have explained to us, and some of us who have been in this struggle right from 1992, and we are bleeding in our hearts. And the other day, I saw the the prosecutors going back to court and telling the, the court of appeal 
that actually uh, whatever they had confiscated 7 billion from the deputy president, they didn't have enough evidence, and there's no evidence. Now that we have gotten this evidence, we have this concrete evidence, is it possible, and Dr. T and uh, Mollens Gates and lawyer and many other lawyers here, that we go back for review in the Supreme Court, we hear what they are also going to tell us. Because this thing, where it is heading, even in the village, people are going to start fighting. Because nobody is ready. Because you, Kenyans are suffering out there, your excellency. Because you lost elections. And they are very bitter. Is there a way we can go for review in court? Thank you very much. We shall pack it for the plenary session. In the meantime, Honorable Tinder will be doing some, some research. I don't think he needs to do that anyway. He has it in his head. In his head. So, can you therefore uh, proceed? But before we do so, those of us who do not have the lunch or meal vouchers, please get them from this lady, Isabel Gitinchi. The lady standing in front of you. Okay? Before you can proceed for lunch. We shall live in an orderly manner. There is enough lunch for every 